All right. Uh, the next kind of watercolor techniques I'm going to show you are some wet on dry techniques. So, uh, with the wet on wet demos, you know we got the water we used water uh, as a carrying device for uh, the watercolor material, and we really sort of embraced the sort of uh, spontaneity, I guess, that could be achieved with the liquid. You can sort of really get the uh, pigments to bleed and travel and make interesting shapes. Um, there's a lot of potential in there, uh, but you know, you're giving up some of your control. Um, watercolor can also be a material that you can get to behave really predictably. Um, the big thing that requires is patience and probably a little bit of planning as well. Um, so here's the next illustration I have to show you. Uh, it's a watercolor illustration of a kind of a scooty little sports car. Um, and it was done with wet on uh, wet over dry techniques. So for wet over dry techniques, you're going to be uh, using the characteristic, characteristic of watercolor uh, that is that it dries uh, quite permanent. As I said before, uh, the water um, that carries the Watercolor is both evaporates from the surface from the, of the paper, but also absorbs into it. And when it absorbs into the paper fiber, it takes some of the pigment with it, which leaves uh, the pigment, <coughs> once it's dry, in a pretty stable place. You can kind of work back over it. Um, I guess my pigment's lifting just a little bit, but the pigment tends to pretty much stay put uh, once it's dry. And so as an artist, you can really take advantage of that. Um, I have a couple layers of process on this demo, uh, but I'll put a little, a couple more here to sort of show you uh, some things that can be done. First, let's layer colors translucently. As you can see on this hood, I'm really getting it to start sort of brighten up and shine. I put a base layer of yellow down and then started uh, engaging some oranges, but I could also do it sort of the opposite way. So to get sort of a highlight on this fender here, now that uh, the watercolor material is completely dry, you can see as I pull it over, It can translucently move over the color, but the color below it really isn't moving um, or isn't moving very much. Sometimes when you get very thick applications of the watercolor, you can get a little bit of lighting, which we see right there. But overall, it's pretty much staying put. So I've both sort of added a colorful highlight, but also sort of brightened uh, and warmed up the red that I laid it the color over. Um, Once I'm at sort of the wet on dry stage, I can also play with detailing. So in our eco line uh, set, our red is a magenta. Um, it's more of a process color. It's an illustration. Uh, using colors that mix in the same way uh, that an uh, inkjet printer mixes ink um, tends to create more sort of a tighter color relationship once you bring your, you scan your illustration in and reproduce it in a digital form. So using, kind of starting with a magenta uh, instead of a red is an aspect of that. I'll be talking more about that when I do the gouache demo in a few minutes here. So, um, but to make a magenta redder. You can just add a little bit of yellow. And what that yellow does is it's really going to warm that up to a more traditional uh, bright red color. So what I'm going to use that color and a brush that I can control. Let's make a little bit more of that. Like this. 
Ooh, I like that color almost a little better. doing some kind of pinstriping, contour, define the shape, and as long as I'm going over areas of this watercolor drawing that are already dried, you can see the lines that I created are really staying defined, staying put, behaving predictably if I control my brush work. And so you can really kind of, in a more controlled way, refine your forms once you've let them dry. Um, working one on dry also gets to be the moment that you can jump across your color wheel a bit more. And work with contrasting tones. I like this purple. I think I want to use it in the windshield. But it's really saturated. Um, I can tell uh, that that pigment is pretty opaque just right out of the tube. A little example, I'll lay down the line. You can see as I pull that pigment over, it really covers that line. So I want to get it much more translucent. I'll lay down a line to test with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up some water with my little pipette here and add significantly more water to this liquid watercolor to desaturate the color. And now I'll give it a test. See how much more translucent that is? I might actually even want it a little bit looser or lighter. A little bit more. All right. I also think I might want to neutralize that color just a little bit. Um, so there are a couple options for that. To quickly neutralize the color, you could sort of add a little bit of its, its complement. Uh, so I could add a little bit of yellow. Let me demonstrate that. I'll take another pipette. Put it over here. Add just a tiny bit of yellow. One little drop. Ooh, that may have gone too far. Add a little bit more purple. What we're looking for is creating what we call a chromatic gray, which has a balanced amount of pigment between yellow and purple. And you end up with a color uh, that kind of sits between uh, those colors. It kind of sits as a, as a neutral place. It's not terribly warm. It's not terribly cool. Uh, it just kind of behaves as a middle tone. So I think I kind of like what I'm getting there. Lay that over, it's still quite translucent. That might be what I do. But just to demonstrate another way to really neutralize your colors quickly. Is to choose a translucent gray pigment. I guess if I show you this way, this color here. in there. Quickly or move on. If 
you can see I'm getting a very similar color. If I had a little bit more, still a little bit warmer, a little bit more purple. Another sort of neutral chromatic gray color. So any of those would work. I might wait, use a combination. But now I'm going to start applying that to the window space. And since the oranges that I applied previously have already dried, I can pull them right up to that very warm color, but you can see I'm not getting any pooling, bleeding, in an unintentional color mixing. Which is what I was hoping avoid so that's good so I'm laying in that color it's a really pretty high contrast tone put it in the light as well and this is tedious so I won't make you watch it but it just kind of gives you a, a sense of how the watercolors can behave differently when working wet on dry versus wet on wet see I can even go right over that orange without uh, any unwanted blending. Since the two different chromatic grays are very similar, I could also play with sort of warming that tone up with a little wet on wet technique within that space as well. All right. like that. Um, when working when on dry, uh, another sort of technique you might be interested in using, or working kind of in combination, is you can use a little bit of the gum Arabic that I showed you last time. And what that's going to do is it's going to make your pigment stickier. You can see it has a slightly viscous texture. So if I mix some of the pigment, into that, I'm going to get a watercolor that's a bit more translucent. in its application, but it also is going to sort of hold its position, even when going over a moist or wet shape, a little bit more securely. So, you know, just that one little bit of wet on wet technique that I applied a minute ago did a, quite a lot of pulling and pooling. But if I go back over, with watercolor that I've added more gum Arabic to that can be kind of a correction tool. And I can get it to sort of stay in place uh, more successfully. So that can be another sort of additional project process that you add that can give you a little bit more control with your watercolor. Um, one thing that is important to note, um, and you should just kind of watch it as it dries, that it will have a different kind of surface quality, I guess. It, it dries a bit shinier uh, as than just uh, the pre-mixed watercolor. Um, so it may look a little bit different on the surface, so that's just something to keep in mind as well. All right? And that's all for now.